Hi guys, welcome back to Level Up Rugby. I'm OJ and this is what we got up to this week. Oh. 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 The week, it may start on Monday, but the strong, they start on Sunday and that's exactly what we're doing. We're out for the very first run slash walk of pre-season 2023 slash 24. Here are the scenes for the run. Just going around the local park, essentially doing 2K run, 1K walk. The reason for that, well, there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, and you'll hear a lot about this throughout the entirety of my pre-season, is that my body may as well be made of chocolate because it falls apart and I haven't done much, if any, fitness or running or sport of any kind <laughs> for the last month or so. I've been heavy into a bulk, getting my numbers up in the gym, and that's resulted in me getting very, very heavy, generally speaking, in terms of body mass. The plan for today's run is about time. It's a timed run today. Not timed in the sense of how fast I can go, but timed in the sense of how long I can continuously run for and I can feel my body already screaming at me trying to adapt to these new circumstances I'm putting it under that it hasn't been under for the last God knows how long. How I'm doing this is working in a, the range of where you can maintain a conversation for. If anyone is a runner out there, then you'll know about max zones, VO2 max zones. I don't exactly know what those VO2 zones mean. Um, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a sports science student. Even I'm just a guy who watches a lot of YouTube and a lot of TikTok and I hear people talking about running at a pace where you can maintain a conversation. That's the threshold, generally speaking, not technically speaking or measured, but based on feel where you can maintain a conversation for. And that's where I'm at at the moment. And the reason for that is because ain't no way I'm pushing myself that hard on the first session back. That's the most important thing because I've been so guilty of it before and I'm guilty of it now whilst I'm out here on the runs and I hear the time come in through my ears. I'm like, oh God, pick up the pace, mate, pick up the pace. I think a lot of people can understand that because a lot of people are just naturally competitive and you want to improve your times. But the point of today isn't about times and timing things, it's about duration, the length of time I can maintain this pace for. And as I alluded to earlier, so my body can adapt. My body falls apart at the touch of a feather essentially so doing this stepping from right to left to right to left essentially is waking my body up blowing off the cobwebs getting rid of that rust around the system um, and allowing me then to push on and test myself cardiovascularly if that's a word later on right now I'm just testing my body's muscle and skeletal system so yeah it's not about pushing myself for a certain time it's about how long I can continue to run for and actually coming out just to enjoy a run. I think that's one thing that I got in the trap of back over COVID times was constantly going out and pushing myself and pushing myself to get a better time and a better time. But it's not always about that. And often that results in a lot of people stopping because it's such a mental challenge, not just physically, but mentally to try and keep on getting out there and keep on doing things. And of course, if you're an athlete, crack on. But I'm not a runner. I just run so I can play rugby. So I'm running for fun today. I've come out to a lovely spot, as you can see, just acres of space and it's nice to get outside. The other reason why I'm doing this like walk run program essentially to start off is because I want to get my 10,000 steps in. I heard somewhere, I don't know if the science is true, leave a comment down below if you know the facts behind this, but I heard that running 5K burns a similar amount of calories as walking 5K. And a lot of people find walking 5K a lot easier. Of course, you're working harder and it's a shorter space of time when you're running 5K compared to how long you have to remain walking to walk 5K. Uh, but you get the point. It's important to get outside and get those steps in. I'm trying to get 10,000 steps a day. I don't know why, but I hear that number all the time. So I'm trying to get those 10,000 steps in, whether that's walking, running, whatever. I'm gonna get those steps in because as we're leading on to again, my body falls apart very easily. And the reason for that is because I'm so bloody heavy. I'm at the end of my bulk now, as I said at the start, and I've got all the way up to 105 kilos from 
around 95 kilos over the course of my bulk. I've got all my lifts going up, all the numbers going up. I'll cover that in another video if anyone's interested. Uh, about gym numbers but uh yeah so I, i've got all my numbers up that's including weight and i'm very heavy now and that in my theory is what results in a lot of the time my shin's been coming back and that's my chronic injury that's the thing that yeah, honestly it's been a tough road and you think just shin splints no it's a difficult one and it stopped me from running and stops me from playing it the best of my ability ever carrying the injury all season it's such a pathetic injury because it's not like a broken bone or a torn quad it is just Shin splint, but it's actually excruciatingly painful. And my theory, part of it, along with other things that I'll cover later on in a separate video about how to overcome shin splint, is my weight. My weight essentially being too heavy. So every time in a rugby game, especially on an artificial grass pitch, which we play on at Harpenden, every turn I make, every step puts a lot of pressure through each joint, especially when I'm carrying more weight. So, I need to get rid of that weight. And that's why we're getting those 10K steps in. That's why we don't mind walking a bit of this, just to get our body freshened up, just to feel a bit more adapted when the time comes to start pushing myself more cardiovascular. Li, 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 li. So yeah, that's what we're up to today. Working at a walking, talking pace. Another thing that I do to maintain a slow pace and make sure I don't push myself too much, because I can really start doing that very quickly is to breathe through my nose. Again, I'm no sports science specialist, but I hear about people talking about nose breathing an awful lot. And I am just a common mouth breather. Um, I don't breathe through my nose and I find it incredibly difficult to do that. But that forces me then to run slowly. So yeah, that's what I'm doing, breathing through my nose rather than my mouth, just to force myself to slow my pace down, focus on my strides, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So yeah, we made it all the way around the other side. That's where we were over there somewhere. There we were over there. And yeah, we're now continuing on with a bit more of a slow walk for the next kilometre, then finish off with a couple more Ks and then just finish when we're ready, you know? Today's not about pushing ourselves mentally or physically. It's just about getting outside and having a good time. So that's what we're doing today, getting out for a walk slash run, just to get the legs moving, blowing out those cobwebs, dusting off the rust, and just to start the process of my body adapting to getting back to being an athlete rather than a bodybuilder for the off season, which I'm guilty of being. I'm trying to get those 10K steps in, so start losing that weight so that the injuries are less, well, the same injuries are less likely to happen. I'm sure other injuries will come along the way, but uh, less likely to have those same shin splint injuries, same hip flexor injuries from carrying all that weight around. So that's the plan, getting those 10K steps in, helping my body adapt, staying in those walking, talking, working range um that vo2 max zone whatever you want to call it if you know the detail please let me know and then yeah just getting the cogs turning again and getting outside getting some fresh air having a good time running for fun rather than running for times and distances just getting outside having a good time and yeah that's the start of it day one i'm gonna go off and do some filming after this when i get home today working on the next stage of the goal kicking process make sure you check out the instagram for that as always it'll be on the youtube too one of the things i've definitely noticed is the difference between running on tarmac and concrete compared to this lovely luscious grass it just makes it a lot easier uh, which is another reason why i'm taking it nice and easy on the road in terms of just building that repetition of left right left right for my body and then i'll come out and do the majority of my cardiovascular training on grass just so it's easier on the joints it makes a big difference for anyone who does have those niggly injuries but it's time to get back on the run get out of this park get on the way home and see how far we can go no not how far we can go not how fast we can run but how long we can run for that's the plan for today i hope you're all having a blessed day and i'll i'll see you later have a good one a slight side note away from the technical running speak just a bit of sunday philosophy for you if you are someone who lacks confidence struggles to go and talk to people just getting to know new people you've got to start practicing the habit and that doesn't mean start by going and chatting to some rando on the street but what it does mean starting with is smiling to someone when you're running past them whenever you see another runner on the road give them a nice big smile i hate people who run like this as soon as they see someone coming towards them Get a nice big smile on your face, give them a nod, and you start to build the habit of talking to other people and interacting with strangers, essentially. 
and that allows you to build friendships, etc. If you are a runner and you see me out on the road, give me a big smile, say hello, and then go on your way. Have a good time. Don't be a frowner. Get that smile on your face. Get that dopamine rush. Remember, make a nice big smile. I can tell you now, it's a big feeling. It's a great feeling. Better than the feeling of that smell of the KFC I just ran past. It's day one of pre-season, I'm already wanting some food. Not looking good. Oh, right guys, I am back at the current Level Up HQ. I just finished the first run slash walk of pre-season. Ran about 10K, of which of that 10K probably walked about three of it. Um, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. That wasn't the point though. The point was the distance as we alluded to earlier. It wasn't about time, it was about duration. And we were out for about an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes, somewhere in that window. So yeah, it was good to get outside, not just to get the fresh air, the sunlight, all of that good stuff, but also get the body working as well. And yeah, it's a good start. Uh, on to the next, I guess. Oh, I promise I'm not breaking in. There's just an irritating gate on the car park, which I don't park in. Park in the other one because I once got a car trapped in here. Anyway, as I was saying, I've got all the gear, absolutely no idea, but I do know what I'm talking about with regard to a bit of ruggers. And here we are at the local ground where I filmed the majority of the long, long form content that I do, all on the goal kicking process. It's the exhaustive explanation of goal kicking covering every single detail you can possibly think of. So if you haven't seen that already, and you're a goal kicker, you have to go and check it out. The long form videos are on my YouTube. The shorter form clips of those long form videos are all over my Instagram. If you are a kicker, you have to watch the long form. It's all in one place for you, all really easy. It's not the easiest watch in the world, especially the stuff at the start when I first began shooting content, but uh, all the details are still there regardless. And if you care about your performance, it shouldn't matter. But yes, here we are at the ground. I've got my whiteboard, I've got my scripts because I pre-script all the long form videos just to make sure every detail is spot on. It takes me forever to do it, but uh, it's a rewarding process in the end when I know you guys are valuing everything that's put out there and benefiting from it. So yeah, here we are. Let's get filming. I have this lovely little Bluetooth wireless mic. I also have a National Geographic tripod, which actually doesn't fall apart, which is the first time that's ever happened, probably ever. The majority of tripods I have continue to fall apart. I'm not sponsored by the way, this is just letting you have a little bit of insight into the equipment I use. Uh, I also have that little vlogging uh, tripod that I recently just purchased, and also possibly the most valuable piece of stash in my whole setup has to be this bad boy, well, this bad boy here. I'm trying to talk into the mic as well as show you, which isn't working very well. This is my Apple Watch. I can show you like that, I guess. My Apple Watch has to be the most valuable piece of kit I have in my whole setup because it, it overcomes the main issue I had of having to get up, go to the camera and start filming. I can just stay where I am, press the on switch on my recording device, and I'm away, uh, which has saved hours of my life uh, which is absolutely brilliant this is predominantly a mic check it's mic check monday out doing some recording for you guys let you know how good on afterwards good stuff let's see how long i take to get through this we've got 11 slides to get through usually do about between eight and ten so yeah let's see how long this takes we've already been out for two and a half hours i don't know where the time goes but then oh my phone it decided to die which is great. I just love that. Just to go quickly, put some juice in it before we finish off. I had one slide left to record as well, which makes it even more irritating, but it's also a blessing because I've only got one slide left to record. It's all about perspective on these things. Uh, gave me a little break, feeling refreshed now, recuperated for this last slide. So it's going to be a it's going to be a good one. <sighs> Three hours later, and we are done. There's a lot of detail we're going through, all talking about how you're approaching the ball. And yeah, that's this section done. Thankfully, my knee is in agony, if you pardon the pun. I've been stood on it for the last three hours. I'll give you a little insight. Yep. That's what it looks like. Pretty grim. Not what you want, ideally, but these are the lengths I go to for you guys making this content. I hope you all enjoy it at least, or no, not enjoy it. I hope you'll learn something from it. That's the level up motto. Getting better is fun. 
that's the way we like to do things. So yeah, that's the setup. That's me all done. It is still Monday, so I'm going to be getting my own extras in now. Day two of pre-season, we're going to be doing some kicking out of hand, just getting the body moving again, setting that foundational layer of physical movement, because I've been doing nothing for the past three weeks, four weeks, maybe even five. So yeah, just some general standing punts, not hitting anything too hard, not doing any goal kicking, just essentially getting that movement of just swinging and striking the ball back into the feel of things. So yeah, let's get kicking. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend training with AirPods in. I feel like you have to have a certain degree of thought, but in my first session back, I'm not here to start thinking my way into problems. I'm here just to start feeling my way back into things. So when I stick the pods in, it cuts out that mental chatter, that mental noise in my head that sometimes holds me back. I'm a chronic overthinker in that sense. I do it when I play golf. A lot of the time out in the driving range, it essentially stops that mental overload of trying to control things too much. But especially for this first session back, I'm just trying to feel things. And that's why I got those straight away in. Uh, I'm just gonna get through some kicking reps, nothing too interesting, but yeah. Top tip, pro tip. It's quarter past seven. I've been up since six o'clock to be ready for this. I have an interview this morning. It's Tuesday. I am the interviewer, not the interviewee. This time I'm interviewing Faye the Wolf. You may be wondering who is Faye the Wolf? This is the designer of this year's All Blacks Rugby World Cup kit. You may be thinking as well, designer, what do you mean? All black jersey, how can you design that? Well, you'll find out. Um, I also have him and two Adidas representatives on the call just to pick their brains about the performance enhancing features behind the shirt, how they've developed it. So all interesting conversations, but I'm really interested in picking the brains of Faye the Wolf, this guy who had to design something based around darkness and black. Like how do you manage that is a very small design brief. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting interview. If you want to watch the interview back, it's going to be all over the Level Rugby media channels, YouTube, the website, um, Instagram. As you can see, I'm staying on brand, got the Adidas kit on. Let's see how we get on. Oh yeah, there's also supposed to be a special guest appearance from one of Adidas and New Zealand's former all-time greats. Let me know who you think it might be down below in the comments. I'm not getting my hopes up because it's just supposedly it's rumor at the moment. But uh, yeah, if you can guess who it is, that's five points to you. I'll let you know if they turn up after the interview. So as you can see, I'm currently sat in the waiting room of the team's call still. This is such a throwback to all the team's calls of pre-season and COVID and uni days. I do not miss them, to say the least. I much prefer a face-to-face -face interaction, but here we are, calling the other side of the world. So I suppose it's a little bit more cost-friendly, a bit more eco-friendly, but yeah. It's easier than traveling all the way over there, that's to be sure. So you gotta be grateful for that. As you can see here, my questions are already pre-planned out. So there's no throwing anyone off with some high level of journalism here. It's all pretty standardized, just so the guys are prepared with the answers. That's pretty standard across the majority of these things, just give you some, some insight. I've never interviewed anyone before. I've always been sat on the other side of the table usually. So it's gonna be a really interesting experience for me. And hopefully I get a lot of these questions answered and it provides you guys with some insight into the creative design and the performance design of the new All Blacks jersey. Let's see how we get on. That's incredible. I'm sure people my age, my generation will love hearing that kind of stuff behind um, the jersey, not just how it looks, how it performs, but also where it's come from. And it's, it's safe to say, I guess, that gone are the days of those heavy cotton jerseys getting full of water and adding a, a 20 kilo vest to you by the sounds of things from the lightweight design. But talking of weight and weighing you down, how much pressure do you guys feel designing and creating such a performance driven piece of equipment, not just in terms of like style and the, the culture and the history of the All Blacks jersey, but something that actually performed on pitch. What was that feeling for you guys? I think you can go anywhere and there's gonna be pressure in such a job, but especially for rugby in New Zealand, it's 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 different it's different when you're out there so Faye, you've just found out that you've been given the job of designing this all black jersey i want to know 
your thought process immediately and your creative process to come up with this final outcome. Providing something unique for everyone that unites everyone as well is a it's, again the thought process that goes into it the detail behind it is incredible um, that wraps up the majority of the questions I wanted to ask I've got one left for Faye um, of course designing such a notorious shirt you've been involved in the process you've met the people you understand the culture I wouldn't be surprised if you're indoctrinating that a little bit into New Zealand life however the opening game of the year France versus New Zealand who are you going to be supporting Oh, it's way too close. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, well done. What an interesting collection of people who clearly have a lot of thought into their craft, whether that's the design of the shirt with Faye or whether that's the product details and the performance enhancing features of a rugby jersey. You see it as just being a shirt, but listening to these guys speak makes you realise how much detail goes in behind the scenes at level at rugby we love detail we are all about detail and it's so fascinating to hear people talk with such passion and insight into their own craft these two adidas members know their stuff and so does Faye. Faye is an interesting person but yeah really interesting conversation i uh, wasn't expecting so much insight but uh yeah unfortunately there was no guest appearance a little bit gutted if you guessed Dan Carter, DC, the legend, the all-black legend, then you would have been right. He was supposed to have dropped in, but it's interesting enough talking to these blokes. He would have just been a, a guest appearance, and I probably would have lost all composure if he had been there and just battered him with questions about rugby. Uh, so, yeah, it's probably worked out for the better. Might bump into him in the World Cup. Who knows? So that wraps it up. Interview done. Job one of the day done. Time to head to job two. And then on into the evening, we've got training back at half, spit of pre-season. Oh, let's get to it. Hi guys, um, welcome back. I'm gonna keep my voice down because I am still at work. But at work, we have these industrial scales, as you can see here. So I'm gonna step on, see how I'm weighing in about a week into my cup. I start at 105 kilos. All right, not going too bad. Of course, that's with a bit of kit on, so take a kilo off. We're square through 100 after one week, and that's just through putting less in my mouth. I had so many people walking on me then, that was very embarrassing. The vlogger life. Gotta get, gotta get used to this. Right guys, it is Tuesday evening. It is day three of pre-season. We had a lovely conversation this morning with Faye the Wolf and the lads from Adidas. But now we are outside and in lovely pre-season conditions. As you can see, uh, a typical UK-based pre-season session coming up at the Mighty Harps, back at Redbourne Lane. Up the Cox, we absolutely love it here at Harps. Lovely AGP to train on. I can tell you now, in these conditions in winter, that comes through. We're not training on bogs, we're training on immaculate surfaces. So up the Harps, can't wait to see the boys after a fair few weeks and even months now off. Hopefully the rigs aren't looking too bad. Mine is a little worse for wears after the off season. You know, everyone's guilty of it. Uh, but yeah, got the got the calf skins because my shins are already aching up the shin splint gang but yeah gonna rip in there's already some lads out there playing some touch so time to get started day three of pre-season my first day of proper rugby training had the run on sunday had the skill session yesterday evening so things are starting to tick over already but yeah probably gonna rip into it tonight i'm sure there's gonna be some conditioning blocks in there along with a lot of skills and perhaps even a little bit of contact prep on pads just to start the process of layering that foundation of physicality that sets the foundation for any rugby player. So yeah, let's see how we get on. Let's see if uh, the weather doesn't dampen the spirits. <sighs> yeah, it's grim. It's not nice. The rain has stopped a little bit, but that only says how bad it was earlier because it's still raining quite a lot. Right guys, that is session one done. It was soaking as you can tell this is the state of my t-shirt right now 
safe to say it's a little bit wet, but the blessing of it being pre-season is it's not cold. And that is my pro tip for oh, this evening. If you are soft, as most kickers are, not me, absolutely not, then this is the perfect opportunity to practice those wet kicking sessions and gain realistic situations you're gonna find yourself in in the season without getting cold, which is oh, an absolute dream. So if you are soft, get out there, get your kicking reps in now whilst it's wet. Enjoy the, the wet whilst you're not sweltering in sweat and whilst you're not freezing cold as well. I am drenched in not just rain water because it's absolutely tipping it down, but sweat as well. But we're still getting those extras in, of course, after the session, the twos are currently out training. Uh, good to see the boys out there enjoying themselves. But now I'm getting my kicking extras in, of course, after every session. Safe to say the legs are feeling heavy right now. First session back always killed you off, of course, but it was a nice gradual return. Of course, I'm kidding. It was not. It's Matt Davies in charge, pushing everyone to the absolute limit. There's my tee. There's the post. Good start. Just getting through those kicking reps. Nothing too thoughtful about this. Similar to practice yesterday, just swinging. Not really caring about the outcome too much. I am out in front of the post, but I'm not really too fussed about the outcome. Just getting my body through the ball, committing to the kick and just getting swinging again. After a very, very heavy session, my legs are definitely swinging about the place. There's not much control in them right now. They are feeling heavy, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Good first session. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Right, guys, we are back in the level up mobile. Looking like a drowned rat, feeling like a flogged horse. It was a tough session, especially in the wet. It just didn't help. But first session ticked off. Day three, done. Home, eat, sleep, go again tomorrow. Long walk, not much action, maybe a bit of kicking. But other than that, good evening. Hope you all enjoyed yours and I'll see you tomorrow. Just a quick check in, it's Wednesday evening. It's a lovely evening, taking a nice stroll, getting those steps in. Nothing major here, just a nice stroll, getting fresh air, sunlight, all the good stuff. And I wanted to check in quickly about what I said on Sunday's run, about um, smiling at people when you walk past them and how it forces you to have those social interactions, those micro interactions that allow you to go and have those longer conversations with people if you are a bit shy and lacking confidence. And it's now to the stage after saying that that I feel if I don't do it, now I'm lying to myself and I'm cheating myself. It's the same with cold showers. I'm sure I'll cross this topic at another time, but I now feel obliged to smile at everyone because I've set the habit. That's the power of habit. So yes, get out there, get smiling at people, wish them a good evening, and then be on your way. It's such a small thing, which makes such a difference. Uh, it puts a smile on my face at the very least. So yeah, that's this evening. Quick little, about 4K walk. Getting those steps in, having a good time. I hope you're having a lovely evening. Or morning, whenever you're watching this. I'll see you tomorrow for more training. Woo! Right guys, I am back at the Mighty Harps, enjoying a lovely golden hour, ready for session two of pre-season training. As you can tell from that glorious sunshine, the weather is a lot nicer than Tuesday. Tuesday feels like a long time ago now. But yes, yeah, so hopefully gonna have a, a sweatier rather than wetter session tonight. And yeah, building back into the swing of things, enjoying the ruggers, and that's the most important thing at the moment. Just building that foundation, and having a good time getting fitter as well and losing a bit of weight that's the key but yeah i'll see you guys after training catch you in a bit all right guys that is session two in the locker um finish off with a bit of footwork extras i try and balance out between doing kicking and running because i work so much on my kicking and then never do anything on my footwork or my running game so finish off with just some 1v1s. Again, nothing too detailed, nothing too thought provoking. Just simple 1v1, pick away, go, be explosive. We're talking about how that 90% of footwork is just the physical functional stuff. Like 10% of it is like trickery and different kinds of steps and things. Um, so yeah, session two in the bank was a bit, a bit tougher this time. Don't know why that's because the legs are heavy from Tuesday in the rain. 
But yeah, there's definitely a bit more fitness involved. It's an hour and a half session rather than just an hour on a Thursday night. More people here getting down the club, which is great to see the boys. Yeah, got a good sweat on. And yeah, good stuff. I'll see you on the weekend for Bronco time. Good morning, team. It is Saturday, the day of reckoning. We're freshly out the shower and freshly ready to go for today's Bronco assignment. It's safe to say the nerves are very much building. I haven't done a Bronco in a very, very long time and I've never been good at them. I've never been fit. And that is the whole point of this series is to keep myself accountable to actually being an athlete rather than just someone who plays rugby. You know, we're trying to push on this year. We're trying to make the most out of my, my rugby abilities. And first and foremost comes functional ability. If you don't know the level up pyramid, then get to know because that's what we're working on first and foremost is that functional ability, that fitness, that baseline cardio level, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, the excitement's building. It's not nerves, it's excitement. Just gonna make that mental switch. Just walking to the pitch now, I've got my balls. Good to go. I'm gonna do a bit of training afterwards, maybe a bit of shooting if I'm not absolutely knackered. Loughborough College in the distance there. I actually live conveniently close to the Crum, the first team pitch this year. So that's a delight not have to trek into training, especially when it's raining or drive into training as I used to do. Because I used to be so lazy, but now I'm walking. Now I'm getting those steps in. Now I'm feeling good. But yeah, the excitement's building, the tension's building. I'll see you at the pitch. Here we are. Back, finally, after a year of absence, we are back on the crumb. Oh, the mighty hallowed turf, the water. It looks like they've upgraded the seating, which is great. The benches used to be quite bad, but now we've got some racing car driving seats right there. Oh, here we are, back at the mighty borough. Up the luff, up the AV. It's Bronco time. The one major benefit of having an AGP here at Loughborough, other than the fact that it's always a consistent surface throughout the year, is the fact that anyone can come and train on this at any time, more or less, other than when there's teams playing on it, of course. So I can come run my Bronco on here without a groundsman coming and shouting at me, which is always the case on any grass pitch that you go to with those very precious groundsmen. Here's the, the benches. Those seats have been upgraded since I was last here which is nice, nice little addition to the, the setup here. But yeah, let's get broncoing. This is my second prime ever, my, my first ever caffeinated one. Sponsor me please, KSI, Logan Paul. Initial taste test. It tastes a little bit like that white monster energy. The white one, I don't know what it's called. I only ever have it when someone around me is having it before a game. It tastes a little bit like that. It's one of those flavors, it's not actually a flavor. It's not like banana, you know what I mean? It's just artificial. But this is actually, it's more palatable than the strawberry and watermelon one. This is easy to drink. Getting started on that, just to get the, the slight buzz before we start this run. I'm currently reading the David Goggins book, Can't Hurt Me, which is perfect timing for today. Um, a quarter of the way through it. And it's just that, that no excuses mentality that I'm holding at the moment. When I'm doing fitness tests or any kind of hard work, to be honest, my head starts getting involved and I start thinking and thinking about all the excuses I can come up with. Like, I don't need to do this now. I don't need to be as fit as everyone else. I'm a different position. I'm early in the pre season blah. My head can come up with countless excuses for um, anything, really. So the key is to cut out that mental chatter. And to do that, all I'm thinking in my head is, who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? And they don't know me, son. Like it is a bit of a joke, let's be honest. Um, it is just one of those cringe things, but it just occupies your mind mentally. Alternatively, I think about just my breathing. Just focusing on in, out, in, out. Not, I'm so tired. Oh, I've got another rep. Oh, we've got five more sets of this. Not thinking about any of that. Don't bother, don't waste your energy. Don't talk yourself out of something whilst you're doing it. Just shut that mental space off. Because again, in David Goggins' book, you read about and you learn how the mental barrier comes in way before the physical. I haven't got as far as um, what he quotes about being 40% left in the tank. 
when you think you're going to quit. But that's the mentality for today. It's just keep on pushing past that mental barrier so you can reach your physical and then set a new height for your physical barrier. Just don't let your head get in the way. Don't let your Swede control what's going on in your feet. As for times I'm looking for with regard to this Bronco, I'm aiming for five minutes. I think my fastest ever Bronco was a 450 back in the day at Beach and Cliff where I probably weighed about 80 kilos and was fit as a fiddle as a kid just from all the running and training we were doing. I haven't run one proper, well, I have actually here. That's when I started getting injured last time. That's when I started getting my shin splints after COVID. Must've been around the five minute mark. So anything around 510 today, I'm gonna take quite happily because that's a good foundation to work on moving forwards um, for the final Bronco. And it makes it a bit more exciting, doesn't it? Like, let's see how much we can take off. It's always a bit boring if I get four minutes, 10 seconds, run a Bowden Barrett essentially. Because where do we go from there? So we're gonna set a nice, simple pace today. I'm of course gonna be pushing myself. So if I can get in that range, I'll be happy. Anything above 5.30 is a bit of a disappointment. But realistically, I've been doing preseason for one week now. This is the, the Saturday at the end of the week. We started on Sunday, of course, the strong start on Sunday, although the week starts on Monday. Um, and uh, yeah, so today is Saturday, end of my first week. That's enough chit chat. Um, let's get out there. Right guys, I just finished marking the pitch. Um, as you can see, well, that's 20 meters there. My slider there is 40 and over there is 60. That is obviously the 10 meter line here, which you think would be 40 meters, but it's not. The pitch is a little bit small, which does add up if you're a goal kicker. Um, of course, an extra two meters makes a bit of a difference. So it looks like you're kicking from 40, you're actually kicking from like 38. Anyway, pro tip for today is use the measuring app on your iPhone if you're lucky enough to have one, um, because it gives you the specific distances. We wanna get the right times here. That's important to be scientific in our approach the sports science and whatnot of this lovely sporting establishment is coming out in me right now. So yeah, we wanna make sure we're the right distances, as you can see there, just beyond the 40, just beyond the 60. Of course, it's cumulative, so it adds up a little bit, but yeah, they're the distances all set. Pro tip, use the measuring tool to get the right distances. We're gonna get into a little bit of a warm up now, just gonna run a Bronco rep just to get warm, do some stretches generally to see what time. We wanna try and aim for one minute per Bronco. We'll do some broken Broncos later in the year, which is essentially where you run the Bronco you wanna run, the time, have a pause, Bronco you wanna run, because then you can feel out the, the pacing you need to have. Of course, that sort of gamifies the Bronco, which we're trying to avoid. This is just a matter of pushing ourselves and testing our fitness rather than testing how good we are at running a Bronco. But either way, it's important to understand if you wanna be fit. Almost finished with my prime. Uh, I feel like a 13 year old boy with this. But yeah, it's giving me a good buzz. Good to get going. Let's get warmed up. Right, so we're just getting through a little stretch complex, keeping things pretty dynamic, not holding any positions as we're about to do some dynamic work. This isn't the evening when I'm doing my yoga stretches essentially, which are pretty static. This is all dynamic, just rocking and rolling, getting through, loosening my hips, which is the key point for me really. Got to keep those hips loose to help everything else flow. The connection between upper and lower body, blah, blah, blah. Just wanted to talk about though, the lack of AirPods in my ears right now. I love music. It is one of, if not my most favorite thing on the entire planet. My brother, for example, does a music degree and people say that's a pointless degree. You know, it's just a creative degree. You know, you don't need creative degrees. Like uh, you need a, an engineering degree to do engineering. You don't need a degree in music to do music. However, arguably one of the most important industries in the world for people's sanity is the music industry. You can't argue that everyone's listening to music. I don't know anyone who doesn't listen to music and knowing how to compose, how to mix, all that kind of stuff is so important. So shout out my brother for that, bringing music to the people essentially. But yes, as I was gonna say, you'll see the lack of AirPods in my ears right now. And the reason for that is for scientific purposes. We're removing all external variables here, extraneous variables is the technical terminology. I'm not having any extrinsic motivation here to get me through it. There's no David Goggins in my ears telling me that they don't know me. It's all in my head. How much could I push myself physically? Because at the end of the day, when it comes to doing the Bronco test here, when pre-season's in full effect, I'm not gonna have any AirPods in then. 
So when I'm doing longer fitness and things, oh, then I might incorporate some music just because long runs get boring. But when it comes to testing, get those AirPods out, get that music off and just be stuck up here with yourself. It's, it's so important in my opinion to be able to do that because you may have the, the crowd cheering in a game, but it's not the same as testing yourself mentally like, like David Goggins would want you to. He's gonna go run miles by himself with nothing but his thoughts telling him to stop. And that's me, that's me doing this Bronco. Oh, my hips are tight. But yeah, so no AirPods in for this. Strictly just left alone my thoughts. Got my watch on, of course, for the timings. Other than that, it's gonna be pretty, pretty lonely for hopefully less than five minutes. And that's it, five minutes of work. It is that simple, that simple. Oh, I am tight though. I realize that this first vlog is gonna be a lot of talking, getting through a lot of coaching points and whatnot. I've tried to keep it as short as possible. That was my plan for the video, but now I know I just keep on talking and talking. Future episodes are gonna be shorter than this, but I wanted to get through those key coaching points. That is the point of Level Up as a brand, is that we don't sacrifice or compensate on any detail as much as the engagement may go down throughout the video. Anyway, if you have reached this far into the video, first of all, thank you. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am making it. And make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel because it's gonna come out weekly. And leave a comment if you've made it this far. Just, just comment down below, core OJ, you've got a sloppy rig. Then I'll know you've made it this far into the video. Um, and that'll give me some extra motivation to push on through pre-season. I think I'm just postponing this as well. I'm just talking for as long as I can, so I don't have to go run this, but let's cut that nonsense out. Let's go smash it. The Strava's on, the camera's on, the stopwatch is about to start. It is Bronco time, baby. It's safe to say I am very excited. Not nervous, not scared, not in anticipation. I'm just excited for this. I can't wait. Let's stop waiting around, let's stop wasting time. Are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, let's go for the year going. One. Just doing a walking recovery, staying my feet, just trying to suck the air back into my lungs to bring me back to life after that. Went to a little bit of a dark place then. Oh, it's safe to say it didn't go exactly to plan. I don't know why I thought I was Superman, but it wasn't a sub 5.30. It was below 5.40. Thank God it was below six minutes. It was 5.37 according to my watch. We'll check the film back later on. Oh. But yeah, I clearly am not as fit as I thought I was. Still carrying around 98 kilos. Right, again, it's that competitive mindset I spoke about on Monday, getting in there, getting in my head. Oh. So I'm blown after that. Just disappointing really. Not the ideal outcome that we wanted. <sighs> we are only one week in, so maybe I'm being a bit harsh on myself. Just expecting a bit too much of myself. But either way, it's not ideal. We were aiming for about 5.10, believe it or not. I got to that final rep and looked at my watch and it said 4.40. I was like, no way I'm running a full Bronco in 20 seconds or 30 seconds. So yeah, not ideal, but it gives us a target now. We've got to take a minute off our Bronco. I'm saying it here, I'm saying it now. We're taking a minute off, 50 seconds off. I just did the maths in my head. A 4.37 Bronco, I think I'm a bit too lightweight. 
let's aim for that 445. 445. I'm putting my stake in the ground. I won't stop running Broncos until I hit 445. I'll be pretty chuffed with that as an inside back. But yeah, didn't go to plan. I think I set off a bit too fast. I think I was aiming for that five minutes. So I tried to get the first Bronco in under a minute, which I think I did. But then the rest of them suffered because of that. Got about halfway in and David Goggins was ringing in my ears at that point. It was tough, it was an ideal, but we got somewhere to work towards now. I'm a bit annoyed if you can't tell. I never like disappointing myself above all else. So it's gonna be a tough night sleeping tonight with that, but either way, we're back on the horse. We got started. I think this is almost one more Bronco than I ran last year. So that tells you everything about my pre-season fitness, usually. So yeah, we're moving in the right direction. Not an ideal start, but our eyes are set ahead. This is week one, done. Bash, completed, finitoed, banked is the right word. It's in the bank. Now we move on to week two, and then three, and then four. I won't be running Broncos every week. Or maybe I will. Nah, I probably won't. But I'll do some sort of fitness test of some sorts, a long run, then my two regular in-season or in pre-season sessions at Harps and touch rugby blah 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 you'll see all of that coming up on the channel make sure you subscribe turn that notification bell on if you want to be alerted as to when these brilliant vlogs are released on a monday it will be every monday please, please make sure, sure you leave a like, like down, down below, below. Comment. comment oj, OJ that, that bronco, bronco time, time is ridiculous, ridiculous. why have you got such a sloppy, sloppy rig? rig make sure make you sure let me know that you've come this far into the video, video. and then yeah, yeah hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button. Turn the notifications on and I'll see you guys next week.